inshallah, come closer so that we can have a nice look to our program, inshallah. Whoever is back in the, back in the cafeteria area, please come forward, inshallah. We will be beginning with our session number seven. The manifestation of prophetic attributes within the final prophet. Inshallah, our Mufti Wasim Khan, he will be giving us a talk, uh, us a talk in God, on regard to this topic. Inshallah, Mufti Muhammad Wasim Khan was born in Dallas, Texas, grew up in Saudi Arabia, and at the age of six. He currently settled in the USA. In 2010, he has completed his Alam course from Darulun Zakaria, South Africa. He has had his unique opportunity of studying in four different continents, Europe, Asia, Africa, and North, North America. He then did the IFTA course in the same institution for the following year. After completion of the course, he stayed an extra year to be further trained in the in the fields of hadith, tafsir, and fiqh. Mufti Wasim had lectured at the Rutger 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 University University of Illinois and Hartford University. Young and vibrant, he is part of many organizations, such as Children of Adam, and Nasiha, and others. Currently, he is the director and dean of Isra Foundation, an, on, in, an online institution which delivers courses and classes for college students and professionals. He has his own business, caravan travel through which he takes Hajj and Umrah uh, programs annually. May Allah give him tawfiq to give his lecture and benefit us from whatever he is saying and give us also the tawfiq to act upon whatever we hear. I humbly request our Sheikh to come and give his lecture, inshallah. Assalamu <coughs> alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, and Astaghfiruhu, and Ubinubihi, and Atakan Wale, when I rode Ubilla him in Shururi and Fusina, women say he at Armalina. May he hilla who fell out of the letter, or may you live who fell out of the letter. When وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وعزيزنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه وأجباعه وأزواجه وعلينا معهم برحمتك وجودك يا أرحم الراحمين أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى عز وجل في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإنك لعلى خلط عظيم وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم 
Respected brothers, sisters, mashallah, you've been in this program since yesterday. And you've heard different aspects about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa life. <coughs> what is our purpose of being here and listening about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I want to ask you this question. You come here, you hear about how Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked, you hear how, how he spoke, how he smiled, how he cried, how he, uh, how he was with other uh, of his family members, uh, the other topics you've heard, I'm not sure, and you'll hear more topics. What's the purpose of all these things? And there's a lot of new things you've never heard of. You know, I, I remember when I was in South Africa, one of our teachers, Qadir Yubsa, told us that uh, it is very imperative to speak about the physical attributes of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he would say that once he did a dars on Shaman al-Tirmidhi and one whole month, every day for one hour, just the description of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said that people walked out from that program and said, in 40, 50 years of our lives, we heard qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but we never knew how this qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked like. Now you know how he looks like, now you know how he spoke, now he, you know how he acted. What is the benefit of this? What is the purpose of this? Because tomorrow if you were to walk outside, maybe some of the young kids over here, they go to college, hey, how was your weekend? Oh, my weekend was fly, you know, I had a good time, I was chilling with my friends. Oh, what were you doing? Oh, I was in this, I was in our mosque. Oh, what did you guys do in your mosque? Oh, we were talking about Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad? The same Prophet Muhammad because of whose picture people killed uh, other people in Paris? People turn away, distance, distance themselves away. They say, wait, what are you doing? Are you guys promoting hate? So what is the purpose of us sitting in this gathering? What is the purpose of us coming together and talking about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? I want to hear from you guys. I came from a long drive. And it's an hour talk. The purpose is we want to show the peace here. We want to show the peace. MashaAllah. Peaceful. Usually, rather than, rather than arrogant fighter violator. Usually, uh, when someone asks the question, they hope two or three people answer wrong. And then the fourth person is like, okay, you know what, I'll answer it. But MashaAllah, the brother got it right the first time. Our purpose is to show that the man who lived on this earth represented the best example for any of us to follow. And that following him and following Rasulullah will result in complete utopia and complete peace. Look at in the time of the, Sah the Khulafa al-Rashidin, time of Abu Bakr Umar how much peace was upheld. And when Greeks are engulfing the, uh, engulfing the world, and Gre Greeks are engulfing the community, and in Gre Greeks are engulfing the nations, then corruption began. But we want to represent from here that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not a warmonger. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not a tyrant. How many times have he sat in a speech? Let me ask you a question. The, uh, the Obama, President Barack Obama, what do you call him? President Barack Obama, right? Call him a president. King Henry VIII. He's a king, you know, he ruled over a nation. You take uh, Umar bin al-Khattab, he was Amir al-Mu'mineen, he was a Khalifa. You take Dawud al -Islam, he was a king. You take any major figure who had a large dominion, who had a treasury, who had a, 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 a police enforcers, who had security, you call them kings, you call them prime ministers, you call them presidents. <coughs> Let me ask you a question. Some of you range from the age of five and six all the way to the age of 50, 60. MashaAllah, a lot of you look young but uh, the, the salt pepper beards uh, tell a different tale. Uh, some of you have been uh, uh, 60, 70 years. Let me ask you a question. How many times have you heard us refer to King Muhammad? President Muhammad. This man lived a remarkable life and even 1400 years later, none of his followers even call him a king or a president because that is just too low of a category because those kings and presidents, they govern a small group of people. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his governing and his nasiha and his advice 
ranged from Adam al Islam's era all the way to the last man. I was sitting in Mufti Farhan Sab's talk a couple of weeks ago. And uh, before that, I had to go somewhere for a Sira program. I was talking to one of my teachers, Mufti Allah Uddin, Hafidhullah wa Ra'ahu. And over there, he had told me, he said, uh, what are you doing this week? And I said, I'm going to talk on a Sira program. He said, Mona Suleiman Nadwi had wrote a book, Khutbat Madras. He said, look, look into it. So, you know, this is the age. But huwa ayat bayinat fi computer al So I downloaded the book. And you know, there's, there's a different taste. Reading the book and uh, reading the PDF. So while I was flipping, I, stopped, I, I, I stumbled upon a spot where Mona Sulema Nadwi, uh, he highlighted some aspects Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shared with some of the Anbiya Alayhi Wasallam in Urdu. And then I was sitting in Mufi Sahib's talk a couple of weeks ago and I was inspired that time to write a couple of other things and make it into uh, a little more qualities of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, from some from Mona Sulema Nadwi, some that came to my mind, some I heard from other places. Because Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa when Allah sent him down, I mean, you probably heard this poem throughout the whole night. You heard this whole poem the whole night. But to understand who this man was, who this Nabi was, that even the Anbiya desired to be from his Ummah. Even the Anbiya desired to be from his Ummah. That Nabi to Nabi, the followers of this Nabi will also be on an escalated level above the rest followers. So I begin with saying the different qualities. I, by the way, has anyone been over here on Tabliq? Raise your hand if you've been on Tabliq. The last masjid I was in, I also asked them the same question. I don't, I haven't been on Tabliq very often. Uh, <coughs> but uh, over there I told them that I would say the six points of Muhabba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if I remember and there's time at the end, the Tabliq brothers can remind me. The six points of Muhabba, you know, everything's six points, chain of, our teacher, Mufti Radar Haqsa, he was very much on, uh, he used to say that, you know what, uh, he couldn't go on Tabliq, so he used to say that everywhere in Bukhari, Hidayah, Jalali, he would say there's six points. So any masala, he would, even though there would be more options and explanations, he would confine it to six. And he would say, we're, we're following the Tabliq uh, uh, Tariqah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if Adam Alayhi Salam, he had the fatherhood of Adam Alayhi Salam. Adam Alayhi Salam, as we know, is the father of all men and women. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shared the fatherhood of Adam alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَاكِرْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ Many years ago I was in a program where Allah Khalid Mahmood from this ayah deduced a very beautiful deduction of Khatmi Nabuwa. He said the finality of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's prophethood is proven through this ayah. And he explains why. So Allah says, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ The Prophet Wasallam's male offsprings were not living on beyond infancy. They kept on passing away, kept passing away. People started objecting, you have no lineage to carry on. Because a lineage carries on through the men. Then Allah revealed, إِنَّ عَتِينَا كَالْكَوْثَرِ And we all know those ayahs. But in this ayah, Allah says, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ Muhammad was not a father from any of you men. مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ Then Allah says, وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهُ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ But he was a messenger of Allah and he was the final prophet. Now, in one reward, خَاتِمُ النَّبِيِّينَ He was the seal of prophets. So now someone comes in their mind and comes in their mind and says, okay, what is the correlation between مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ Muhammad is not a father to, uh, of, to, to any of you, but he is a prophet. What is the correlation? Imam Suyuti rahimahullah used to say that between the different verses of the Qur'an and the different chapters, there's no correlation, there's no rapt. But as Mu'an Osman Akhtar Sahib has also studied him as a Mufti al Sahib, he will prove otherwise. Not only would he find the correlation in the entire Qur'an, the one ayat, what, how, how they're all interlinked. How one surah is linked with another surah. He used to even find the correlation in Sahih Bukhari. He used to even find the rapt and correlation in Hidayah and Fiqh books. He was a master of all sciences. So he goes on, he says, Allah says that I did not give you any male offsprings, O Muhammad Arabi, because your spiritual offsprings are uncountable. مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ I have not given you any biological offsprings, any biological male children, وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ Allah, But you are the spiritual father for everyone. Now, if Adam was the father for all men and women, 
The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was only the father, spiritual father, for all of his ummah. Still a little diminished in Adam Alayhi No. If Adam Alayhi was the father, biological father, for the men and the women and the humans, Muhammad Arabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the spiritual father for the men, for the women, and even for the jinn. You forget this, mashallah. Wherever I go, there's youth around. What do you guys want to hear about? Jinn stories. <laughs> I was at a wedding last night. There were kids over there. So one of them would just start talking about jinn stories. And one of my friends was getting married. And uh, I was like, oh, let me tell you something that happened two, three days ago. And he was like, yeah, baskara, yeah, meri shadi do He's like, I have a shadi ka dene. Don't scare me today. He said, tell me the stories of other day, not today. I'm getting married today. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa not we, we forget the subtle point, but Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to two nations, not our nation alone. He was sent to two nations. And just as we will be held accountable, that nation will be held accountable as well. And how many jinns are there? They are a nation older than us. How long did they, how long, how many of them? We don't know. But we do know that their number is great. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if Adam alayhi wa was the biological father, the Nabu of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he said, there's different narrations. He said, I was a prophet when Adam was still being molded. Allah had declared my nabuwa when Adam was still being molded. In the Gospel of Barnabas, Wallahu alam how true it is. Wallahu alam how true it is. But in the Gospel of Barnabas, the mainstream Christians reject it and deny it. Some Muslims say that it's true. Wallahu alam. It is written there that when Adam was expelled from heaven, he turned around and he saw the name of Rasulullah inscribed on the Ash of Allah. So he said, Ya Allah, if whoever this person is so honorable that his name is inscribed on your throne, I beseech you through his basira that you forgive us. And through that dua, Allah forgave. Wallahu alam on the authenticity of one time the Sahaba were sitting down. They said, Ya Rasulullah, you know, Adam alayhi salam was Safiullah, the chosen of Allah. Musa was Kalimullah. Ibrahim was Khalilullah. Isa was Ruhullah. So someone came and they said, you know, what about Rasulullah? Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, I am Habibullah. In another place, so we had a, Allah, what did you give me? He said, I kept your name adjacent to my name. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. I kept your name adjacent to my name. Everyone is Musa Khalilullah. There's a word in between. Adam Safiullah. Isa Ruhullah. Muhammad is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had the father of Adam alayhi salatu wa sallam. He had the da'wah of Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh alayhi salam's da'wah ranged for 950 years. And he gave da'wah over and over and over again. Inni da'wah qawmi laylam wa nahara. Day and night. Then when he said, Ya Allah, these, this nation is not going to listen. Wipe them out. Allah wiped them out. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, his da'wah, 1400 years later, and the author of his da'wah is you and I. 1400 years later, and the barakah of his da'wah is you and I. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam da'wah, day in and day out. His own family ostracizing him. His own family expelling him. Yet, all he would say over and over and over again is, Ummati, 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 Oh my Allah, forgive them. Oh my Allah, forgive them. Oh my Allah, forgive them. He had the miracle of Salih. He had the innovativeness of Idris alayhi salam. Idris alayhi salam was the Nabi of Allah, whom, according to some narrations, was the first person to invent a pen. First person to invent a pen. I read once, a very long time ago in one book, that the majority of all inventions or scientific knowledge that, that, that became widespread in humanity, in ancient civilization, was what Allah had put in the hearts of Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. And from there, it went on to the hearts of other people. Idris alayhi salam invented the pen. Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam was unlettered. Illiterate is a hard word to say. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam is unlettered. 
If Idris alayhi salam invented the pen, then Muhammad the Arabi sallallahu alayhi wa put that pen to use. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Uti jawami al kalim. I have been granted a certain miracle, which is concise words that have libraries of meanings. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you take, is there any Bukhari or Muslim or something in, the, in here? No? There is? On the shelf? Go look at it. How big is it? Take out the translation, everything. It's about the book is this big. Take all the sayasitta. Remove all the repetitive ahadith. You have probably this much, how much the person said his entire life and his companions recorded it. This much. You take your, mine and yours. You just take our text messages. Five, ten thousand text messages between just you and one person. Our emails, our Facebooks, and they're just filled. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a man who came and inspired millions after him, nay, billions, and his words, very concise. But I remember, and Marna Asab will attest to this, when we were in Sahih Bukhari, and it was the first class, and Hazrat Mufti Sahib came and taught, and we started, Inna mal amal bin niyat. And, you know, when you're in Dora, and you're in the final year, you're all excited. We're almost done, we're almost Mulana. Get ready for all the dawats, and all the weddings, and all the halwas. I'm just kidding, we're, we're modern movies, we're more into the cheesecakes. <laughs> and the pizzas. So he goes and he says, Inna mara malu bin niyat, and he said, oh you know what, within a couple of days we'll be done with the first couple of chapters, we're going to get on to the exciting part. First day goes by, Inna mara, we still, we're still having explanation on Inna mara malu bin niyat. Second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day, eighth day, ninth day, tenth day, eleventh day, twelfth day. Almost two weeks we spent on one hadith. Two weeks. Every day class would happen for two hours. Two weeks we spent on one hadith. A hadith you all hear about. You know people say, Brother, I am going to go and uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm getting interest on my, on my, in my bank. Brother, it's not permissible. No, brother, I have good intention. I'm going to help fund the masjid with it. Brother, that's not permissible. Brother, do you not know innamal a'malu bin niyat? All deeds are dependent on intentions. We become masters of the hadith overnight. But when our teacher finished after almost two weeks of explanation, he said, he said, you know what? The rest you can read in books. We just touched it today. We just touched it. So if Idris invented that pen, Nabi had that pen put to use. Libraries. Filled of this Islamic text. I was in Temple University the other day, and uh, I had six hours between my Juma and my evening talk. So, I, so they said, you know, do you want to rest? I said, do you have a library here? They said, we have a library here. I said, I want to see your Arabic manuscript. Here. And over there in a library, and I'm pretty sure no, no one has ever checked those books out. But when I went and looked at those books, shelves upon shelves of just our Arabic books of tafsir, hadith, fiqh, over there in a library. That even I went when I was in Harvard, we went and there are, they have three libraries over there, three buildings that have that, that are filled with books. And uh, one of my uh, my host over there, he said, you know what? They they carry one of the rarest manuscripts, the oldest manuscripts of Islamic texts. So I said, okay, you know, let, let's go see. I had another scholar with me, and uh, since he was older, I said, you can choose whatever book, you know, and he chose one book, and we saw it. Anyhow, there were different, different, there were three buildings. There was one building, there was a boy, I, his name I don't remember. Uh, his, uh, he was on the Titanic. And as he was leaving, you know, because he was from a very affluent family and a rich family, they had saved uh, one of the boats for him. And they said, you know, a spot is for you, come and get it. So while he was exiting, he said, wait, I need to go and get my books. Wait, I need to go and get my books. He goes inside to get his books. As he was coming out, the, t uh, the boat left and he sunk and he died. So then his parents took that. They said, my child died for books. They created an endowment, a huge library, and under the kid's name, and uh, you know, it's a humongous library. So I asked them, I said, do you have Arabic and Urdu books here? You have books in Arabic and Persian. They said, yes, we do. I said, where do you keep them? They said, the Arabic books are on the top highest level of the library. The Arabic books are on the top highest level of the library. That if Rasulullah, if Idris A.S. created the pen, Nabi S.A.S. put it to use. Salih A.S. He had a miracle, an ajib miracle. Allah gave him a camel, humongous. Those people were big. 
You know, whenever kids are playing around, they go outside, there's snow, throw a snowball, you know? Kid gets hit, sometimes comes home crying. Mommy, mommy, you know, he threw a snowball at me, small one. When they used to play, they used to grab boulders and chuck it at one another. So you can just imagine how big they are. Their homes were not bought, bought from any real estate company. No guidance, no UIF. I'm not promoting anybody. But their, their, their homes weren't bought from anybody else. Their homes, the summer house was built on top of a mountain. The winter house was built inside the mountain. These people were of no joke. If, Nabi, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted Salih a humongous miracle, a huge miracle, then Allah gave Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the splitting of the moon. If Allah gave Salih alayhi salam, a humongous camel, an enormous camel, then Allah gave Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the entire moon. And in one narration, it comes that it was the time of Maghrib Salah, the sun was about to set. And for Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa the sun was raised and it was delayed. So you're calling the sun in account? The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa miracle was the, as, in, as far as size is concerned, it was the largest than any other Nabi. And if you talk about the value, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given the Quran. Mufti Sayyid Bahan put in one of his lectures, uh, said something very beautiful. He said the other texts, the other three texts were never kalamullah. They were always what Allah put in the hearts of the Nabi or like hadith al-Qudsi. They were not the exact words of Allah. And he said the exact word of Allah was only in the Quran. The other three books, you look at the Bible, they were, it's not the exact words. Then he used to say that supporting this theory, he used to quote a book of Muna Qasim Nanuti, rahimahullah. And for those who want to look more into the research, uh, I can pull it out where I remember where the book was, and I can let you know later on. And it's supporting evidences for it. Afterwards, I'm forgetting the list of the prophets I had. He had the zeal of Huda alayhi salam. If Huda alayhi salatu was salam, went and gave da'wah to his nation over and over again, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam again, relentlessly, constantly gave da'wah to his, to his uh, nation. He had the friendship of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. If Ibrahim alayhi salam was Khalilullah, then Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam was Habibullah. If Ibrahim alayhi salam and Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam, if Ibrahim alayhi salam was the friend of Allah, then Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam was Khalilullah. He had the dignity of Lut alayhi salam. Lut alayhi salatu was salam, he comes and when the homosexuals approached his house, he said that he, these are my daughters, meaning that the nation's women, the nation of Lut alayhi salam, not that his two daughters he was giving to the whole uh, home of Lut, but he said the women in the nation, these are my daughters, go choose any one of them as a, a, as a wife, don't go after the angels that are here. Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam's haya was even more that when the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa passed away, his wives, nobody else was allowed to marry them ever again. His wives became the mothers of all the believers. His wives were never allowed to remarry again. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa had the construction of Ibrahim alayhi, uh, Ismail alayhi salam. If Ismail alayhi salam constructed the Kaaba, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa brought the brought used to the Kaaba. If Ismail alayhi salam built the Kaaba, Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam inhabited the Kaaba. He brought the, he brought the different homes and the different hajis for years and years and years and years all the way until not right now. If Ibrahim alayhi salam broke one idol, Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam broke, three, broke 360 idols around the Kaaba. He had, if Ishaq alayhi salam constructed Masjid Aqsa, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became the Imam of Masjid Al-Aqsa. We know in the Ruayat of Mi'raj, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came there, all the prophets are there, 120,000 or more. Everyone there, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imam, Ibrahim alayhi wa sallam had two children, Ismail and Ishaq. One built the Kaaba, the other built Masjid Al-Aqsa. And Ibrahim alayhi wa sallam had the Buraq. And he would go from one to the other, visit the two towns uh, on the Buraq. So if Ishaq alayhi wa sallam constructed the Kaaba, uh, constructed Masjid Al-Aqsa, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became Imam of that Masjid Al-Aqsa. <coughs> he had the vow of Ya'qub Alayhi Salaam. I'm going to need a little bit of water if there's any water around here. Ya'qub Alayhi Salaam in the in the Surah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says in the Quran. إِلَّا مَا حَرَّمَ إِسْرَائِيلُ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِهِ 
كل الطعام كان حدا لبني إسرائيل إلا ما حرم إسرائيل على نفسه. The name of Yaqub عليه السلام was Israel as well. That's why Banu Israel, the children of Israel, out of his twelve children, twelve different uh, nations. I was in Palestine uh, last year, exactly around this time, and uh, I was by the Wailing Wall. And as we were walking inside uh, security, we got stopped, right? And uh, they were starting you know, searching us, and there was this one Desi brother, you know? Like you could see he was Indian. He saw me and he said, uh, Urdu! And I said, yeah, gee. And he said, oh, come here. You know, he started, we started talking in Urdu. And I was like, wow, I was like, and he started speaking Hebrew, you know? He got us, you know, around. And I said, wow, you speak Hebrew so fluently and Urdu. He said, where are you from? I'm gonna excuse me for a little bit. I'm gonna Urdu for like two minutes. He said, "Yar, me to Israel me peda hua." I said, "But where are you originally from?" He said, "Me Gujarati mu." I was like, uh, "What religion are you?" He said, "Me Jew." And I, he said, I, "He said I'm, he said I'm Gujarati from India. I was born in Israel. I'm a Jew." And I said, "I thought you had to be born. I thought your mother had to be a Jewish for you to be Jew." He said, "Listen, man. Jacob had twelve kids." One son ended up in Gujarat. <laughs> <laughs> he said, and that's how we're all Jewish. So anyway, Yaqub Salab, he had a sickness called sciatica. Does anyone know what sciatica is? Man, this community is on point. I can't trick you guys anywhere. It's a sickness where your nerves start pitching. It hurts a lot. So, Yaqub he really liked camel meat. He really, he, he admired it. And uh, when he had this sickness, he said, yeah, Oh my Allah, remove the sickness from me. And I, in return, I will sacrifice something that's very beloved to me, camel meat. I won't ever eat it again. Allah said, okay. Rem absolved him from the sickness. Sorry, Yaqub said, I will not eat camel meat. And then the Banu Israel, what they did was that they said, oh, if Yaqub doesn't eat it, none of us will eat it. They made it haram on themselves. It wasn't haram on them. Many years later, thousands of years later, Yaqub made a vow. Allah said, okay, you made the vow. Stop eating camel meat. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa comes from the house of Safiya radiallahu alayhi with Aisha and Hafsa radiallahu alayhi And they say, Ya Rasulullah, you know the story is famous. It seems like your mouth is omitting a, f a foul order, odor. So what did you have to eat? Oh, I had honey. And we all know honey doesn't smell. After that, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Wallahi, I will never eat honey again. Allah mentioned the oath of Yaqub Alayhi Salaam in Juz number four. Uh, I believe Juz number four, right? What is the four faz here? Mono smansa? Four Juz? Mamun? Yes? No? Kulu ta'am kan hini li bani Israel ila ma haram Israel ala nafsi? Four Juz, I believe. Six? Okay. Six days, inshallah. Allah says in another Quran, in another ayah, is, Ya ayyuhan nabi, lima tuhaddimu ma ahallallahu lak. Ya ayyuhan nabi, lima tuhaddimu ma ahallallahu lak. He said, Ya'um, when he was sick, Allah, he said, Ya Allah, absolve me of this sickness, I'll stop eating cow meat. Allah said, I absolved you, stop eating cow meat. Muhammad al-Arabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Oh my Allah, I will not eat honey again. Allah says, Oh Muhammad al-Arabi, Ya ayyuhan nabi, lima tuhadrimu ma ahallallahu lak. Allah made it halal, halal upon you. Why do you make it haram? Break your oath and continue eating honey. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved honey. Allah said, Oh Muhammad al okay, when it came to Yaqub, you, I will absolve you of your sickness. Keep your oath. But Oh Muhammad al-Arabi, you love honey. Break the oath and continue eating. He had the beauty of Yusuf alayhi There is a common disagreement among scholars who was the most beautiful amongst the prophets. You have three contestants. Who can name the three contestants for me? Adam alayhi salam, uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, and Rasulullah Can't get you guys anywhere, can I? <laughs> Always got something. The three, Adam alayhi salam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, and Yusuf alayhi salam. Adam alayhi salam because he was the one that Allah created with his own hands. Kama yaliku shani. Yusuf alayhi salam 
In one hadith, he came, he had the half of beauty of the entire nation. Some scholars say half of the beauty of the entire creation ever created. Some say half of the beauty of that time. Ibrahim alayhi wife, Sarah alayhi they say she had one sixth of the beauty of the women of that time. That's how beautiful she was. Yusuf alayhi salatu was and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Yusuf alayhi salam was beautiful. We all know the story of Zulaikha. Some scholars say it's pronounced Zalikha. She felt she, she started getting attracted to him. You know, she went back to her friends and they started, you know, women, they love gossip. They said there's two ways of getting news across, you know, the quickest way of getting news across anywhere you want to get it. Email and female. <laughs> right? So, you know, and uh, girls are, mashallah, very, uh, very, uh, they don't forget. They're, they're, they're vengeful, mashallah. You know, sometimes, not every girls. Someone's going to say, oh, you know, Mufti Saab came and he's feminist. You know, he's, he's anti-women. No. So they said, oh, you know what? She said, okay, you know what? They're making fun of me. I'm going to show her. I'm going to show them. She made them all sit together. And I mean, this woman was, was next level. She's like, are you? She had this whole thing planned out elaborately. That I'm going to have women sitting down. I'm going to give them fruits in their hands. I'm going to give them a knife. I'm going to tell them to cut the fruit. Right? And I'm going to tell Yusuf Ali to walk. You know, uh, I don't know how many of you have seen this clip on YouTube uh, of there's these uh, famous young Muslim kids who, who make a lot of YouTube videos. Uh, and then sometimes they go and have these shows in different cities. And somebody made a YouTube video of how all the girls go crazy running after them. I think it was Fosi Tube or something, you know, you went somewhere and you just see hundreds of girls just running and yelling, oh my God, OMG, OMG, you know, emoji, emoji, trying to snap them, take pictures, and running after them. When Yusuf came, you know, you know, how, you know when you say you freeze? When you see somebody so beautiful that you freeze, those women were in a trance. And so beautiful was he that as they were cutting their fruit, not realizing that they began cutting their own fingers. That was the beauty of Yusuf Ali Salat. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a full moon night. They're standing, has anyone been for Umrah over here? Raise your hand if you've been for Umrah or Hajj. You know where Safa Marwa is? When you exit Safa, on the right, there's a king's palace. Seen it? That king's palace rests upon Jabal Abi Ubais. And then you'll see a little tunnel. And on the left, there's a huge mountain that is called Sherba Abi Talib. And that is where the Prophet was boycotted for three years. Rasulullah stood there. And it was a full moon. Half the moon was resting between Jabal Abi Qubais and Sherba Abi Talib. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was there. The Kufari prayer said, show us a miracle. What miracle would you like to see? You see this moon? Yeah. Split it in half. Split the moon in half. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi took his finger, did ishara towards the moon, and the moon cleft asunder. The moon cut it in half. The Urdu poem is not coming to my mind right now. But the meaning of it is, he said that the beauty of Yusuf was such that only a couple of fingers got cut. But the beauty of Muhammad Arabi was such that the moon itself, the, the beauty of the finger of Muhammad was such that the moon even cut itself. He said the beauty of Yusuf was such that only a couple of fingers got cut. But the beauty of the finger of Muhammad was such that the moon cut itself. Aisha the Allah says, I was once at home and I lost a needle. I was once at home and I lost a needle. And I was looking for it. And Muhammad Arabi smiled. And the nur from his smile illuminated the room and I found my needle. You know. A wife praising a husband is a very big deal. And vice versa. Or vice versa. A wife praising a husband is a very big deal. You know, famous story you've already heard. One time, you know, one husband who could never please his wife. You know, she's always got something to say. So one day she saw some guy flying. And she said, wow. Look at him. 
So her, his husband saw from far, you know, that she's admiring. So he quietly waited a couple of hours, came back, and he said, you saw somebody flying outside? She said, yeah. Could you believe it? He's just flying in the air. He's like, yeah, it's pretty cool, right? It's amazing. Did you, did you think it was pretty cool? Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. You know who that was? Who, do you know him? Yeah, it was me. It was flying crooked. <laughs> It's flying crooked. So he goes on. Nabi, she praising us. Nabi, Aisha, they are praised. Nabi, Salah, some zone. Afterwards, Rasulullah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he had. If Musa al-Islam was Kalimullah, then Rasulullah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, brought that nirmat to the entire ummah. Musa al-Islam spoke to Allah only a couple of times, two or three times, not more than that. He didn't speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It wasn't like a daily basis. You know, it was two, three times in Musa's entire life. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we all know the story. He went up the different heavens. Sixth heaven was Musa alayhi salam. Seventh heaven was Ibrahim alayhi salam. Then he came into the proximity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He reached the sixth heaven. And at the sixth heaven, Musa alayhi salam is Kalimullah. Seventh heaven is Ibrahim Khalilullah. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, oh... My son, uh, the land of Jannah is very vast, very uh, plain. Tell your ummah to say, give them my salam. <coughs> give them my salam. And it is sunnah to say, wa alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi wa alayhi wa Tell them, land is barren, say, subhanallah, you get a tree. Good, mashallah. Goes to Allah, Allah says, you have 50 prayers. What is this prayer? It's, if Musa was kalimullah, the entire ummah of Rasulullah, is able to talk to Allah five times a day. Allah says, go, this is, this is my gift to you. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi comes, Ibrahim Alayhi Salaam stays silent, didn't, doesn't say anything. Goes to Musa Alayhi Salaam. Hey, what happened? Oh, I went to Allah and Allah gave me a gift. What is it? 50 prayers. 50? No, they, your ummah can't do it. I have Israel. And your ummah won't be able to do it. Ask Allah for a little percentage off discount. You know, they say, mashallah, they love asking for discounts. You know, uh, uh, 30%. 30%, 40%, 50%, you know. Uh, my mom, uh, we went to uh, uh, a store once and my, one of my friends was working there, a childhood friend. And she said, Beta, how are you doing? And he said, you know, auntie, I'm doing really well, you know. And uh, my mom was like, okay, Beta, uh, how much is this thing? He's like, auntie's going to be, you know, how much ever it was. She's like, Beta, you know you can put that employee discount on there, can't you? <laughs> I remember when, he, when we came, we used to live in Saudi Arabia. It's back in the day, now everything is like a mall, some, some towers, you know. You just have to, you know, it's a fixed price. Back in the day, when you used to go for Hajj and Umrah, has anyone been to Hajj and Umrah in the 90s or 80s? Raise your hand for Hajj and Umrah in the 90s or 80s. 80s, 90s? Early 2000, maybe 2000, 2001, 2002? No? It was haggling. How much? 60 riyals. 40. Leave, leave. You walk out. Okay, come back, come back, come back, come back. 55. 42. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, come back, come back, come back. You know, we, we know how the bargaining goes. I was in Bangladesh uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, uh, I went to visit Bangladesh just to tour it. I was in Silet, and um, uh, I didn't speak the language. I'm, I'm not Bangladeshi. So I took a friend, and I said, you know, I want to go buy some glasses, and uh, I want to uh, bargain, right? So he said, I said, you know, I just, just for the heck of it, you know, because you're in a different country, you don't bargain. You can't go to come in America uh, and start bargaining, right? Uh, which my mom did in Staple. She said, how much is the paper? It's $120. So I'll give you 80 for it. <laughs> the guy's like, man, we can't do this. And she's like, yeah, you guys get $80 for this. <laughs> so anyway, uh, may Allah give my mom barakat in her life, long life, healthy life, one of the most amazing women, inspirational women I've met. In, you know, the most inspirational woman in my life. Uh, not that I have other women that are inspirational to me, but um, <laughs> she's the highest. Going on to say, when well, I was in Bangladesh, then I had this friend with me, you know, I said, you know, can you bargain? So, you know, it was like 600 kaka, and he's trying to bargain, and I'm like, yo, you're not doing a good job, man. I'm going to bargain, you're going to translate for me. <laughs> he was like, all right. So we're going at it, you know, for 45 minutes or an hour, we're just going at it. The other guy's like, you know, 600 taka, and I'm like, no, 400 taka, you know, he's like, no, 480 taka, this, you know, and we're just going in and out, in and out, you know, it's like an hour. The guy's really frustrated, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to get this discount, and, you know, and I was like, all right, whatever it was, you know. By the time I got that discount, I walked out. My friend was like, yo, 
So how was the discount? I was like, yo, I, I got it really good. He's like, how much did you get off? I was like, yo, I was able to, you know, go down like uh, 200 taka. I was like, yo, for you spent an hour. I was like, he's like, how much is that in dollars? I was like, it's like $2.25. <laughs> anyway, uh, going back, Rasulullah went to the proximity of Allah, came back. Was, how much? No, 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 they can't do it. Go back. Goes, comes back. How much? No, no, they can't do it. All the way. The question arises that the Prophet kept on passing Ibrahim a.s. Right? He kept on passing Ibrahim a.s. Why did Ibrahim a.s. not say anything? Why did Musa a.s. constantly say something? I'm not going to ask you guys because you guys are going to answer it. I told him, Ibrahim Why did Ibrahim Hassan not say anything? He did not have the experience. Experience? Okay. <laughs> Who was Ibrahim? What was his what was his quality? Khalilullah. What happens with friends? That's all It's okay. Whatever they say, it's all good, man. It's okay. Musa Karimullah. Wa huwa Karimullah. Musa says, no, 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 no. Talk, talk, talk. I know how it is to talk to Allah. Keep on going talking to Allah. Yatarabti anbiyaki. Rukhi Mustafa tu deke. Yatarabti anbiyaki. Rukhi Mustafa tu deke. Ye namaz ka vasila unikam agaya. Musa al said, I desire to see Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam why I could not enjoy the proximity that he enjoyed with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala but I can enjoy the proximity of that being who enjoyed the proximity of Allah It didn't matter, you could have said in the beginning make it five, make it one, make it two you could have said in the beginning why this whole up and down because he could not enjoy the proximity of Allah he said I want to enjoy the proximity of that being who enjoys the proximity of Allah Subhanahu there's one time, I believe it was Muqtad bin Aswad who was sitting down, and then Niriwaya is in Abu Naim Asfahani's famous book. What was, what was Abu Naim Asfahani's famous book? With the difference, right? The, the book steam is coming out of my mind. He walks past and he says, Tuba li hatayni al-aynayn al-latayni ra'ata Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He told the Sahabi, he said, hold on for a second. Let me peer into your eyes. Let me glance into those eyes, the eyes that saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadith is long some other time. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa had the voice of Dawood alayhi salam. If Dawood alayhi salam's recitation of the Zabur made the mountains and the birds sing with him, then the recitation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had the angels around him. The recitation of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had the angels around him. He had Prophets that I'm missing right now. He had the sacrifice of Ismail alayhi salam, Ismail alayhi salam. He sacrificed himself. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sacrificed his own children, sacrificed his family members. We all know. There's a couple of minutes left. I just want to quickly go through all of these. Uh, you know, it's it's very easy to, to make a sacrifice for yourself, but it's very difficult to sacrifice your children. There's a famous hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Uh, a mother with two daughters comes to the house of Aisha radiallahu anha, knocks on the door. She opens the door. She says, "Is there anything in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam?" She says, "I have nothing but three dates." So the mother takes one date, gives each date to the daughter. As the mother is about to eat her date, the two daughters quickly gobble up their dates, and the mother sees that the eye, the daughters are still hungry. What can one date suffice? Wallahi, thinking about how they lived. One date is our iftar. We don't even count it as food. People literally eat the kajur just to break the fast. Whereas this was the diet of the Sahaba and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was their diet. So he goes, he takes the one date, she cuts it in half and she gives it to the child. And the two children eat the date and the woman walks off. A person will always sacrifice their children above, the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, sacrifice themselves above their children. He had the strength of Musa alayhi salam when the time of Khandaq 
Everyone was breaking boulders. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came there and there was one boulder nobody could break. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came and broke the boulder and the boulder shattered. He had the ascent of Ilyas alayhi salam. Ilyas alayhi salam was taken to the heavens. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa went to the heavens and came back as well. He had the tawbah of Yunus alayhi salam. Yunus alayhi salam went when he left uh, his community, when he left his uh, uh, nation, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent uh, a, a, a whale which engulfed him for a little while. And this story is very famous. However, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's uh, life, there were many times when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reprimanded Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he never ever made Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam go through a test because of any of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did never sin in his life. But as human, he did. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him an option of two judgments. And at times, Allah wanted to see Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam choose a judgment to reprimand Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is from the profession of the Quran. This is not from the imperfection of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam making a mistake in judgment is not from him, the imperfection of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but from the profession of the Quran. That in places in the Quran, Allah says, Oh Muhammad Arabi, what you did was not right. If Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam invented the Quran from himself, would anyone write against themselves? Would anyone write that they made a mistake? But in the Quran, very clear, Allah says, at the time of Badr, Muhammad al-Arabi, you should not have taken uh, any captives. Ma kana li It was not, it's not for you. But Allah reprimands them, it's okay. Did you pray on the Manafi's grave? No, you were not supposed to do it. Next next time, la taqum abada. Don't stand again on their graves again. If Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi invented the Quran himself, you think he would write these things? Any person who invented the book themselves, would they write it? No. So these misjudgments were not from the imperfection of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi but from his perfection. And then you have the chastity of Yahya alayhi salam, the asceticism of Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam was known uh, to be a very ascetic prophet. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, ra'in al-hilal, thumma ra'in al-hilal, thumma ra'in al-hilal. Three months went by, and in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi salam, the oil never got lit. There are different, Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam was the embodiment of all the prophets. The point with all these things is not to diminish any prophet. Tilka rusul faltalna ba'adam ala ba'adam. So prophets have a different value above the other prophets. I was in uh, Johannesburg. One time on the day of Eid, a person saw my clothes and he said, uh, are you Muslim? And I said, yes. He said, well, I'm a Christian priest. I don't think he was a Christian priest. But anyway, that's what he said he was. Uh, and he said, uh, you know, why do you wear these clothes? I said, I want to do it to follow Muhammad. He said, oh, you want to follow Muhammad? He said, let me tell you something. Jesus never married. And Muhammad, he had seven wives. I said, well, he actually had 11 wives. So he started laughing. He said, oh, all the better. He said, Jesus never succumbed to the temptation of this world, whereas Muhammad was engulfed with the temptation of this world. And I said, first of all, he said, you guys say Jesus and Muhammad are equal, whereas Jesus never married and Muhammad married. So I said, let me correct you. We don't say Jesus and Muhammad are equal. He said, yeah, you guys do. I said, no. We say Muhammad is better than Jesus. He said, how? Jesus was more godly. I said, a person's main part of his life is what? His marital life. You know, it's one time someone said to, uh, to uh, at work, he said, go to hell. So the guy comes home early. He said, why are you, why are you home early, honey? He said, oh, the boss told us all to go to hell. So I came home. <laughs> you know? And it's not always the girl's fault, you know? The guys are also, you know, mashallah. You know, one time. No, you know you have those people, you know, mashallah, the guy's life is going perfect, got nothing wrong in his life, swell, everything 100%, but you know, uh, uncles, you know, sometimes it's that random day, they have to make a scene. Nothing is wrong, but they just have to get angry and throw a tantrum, you know? So it happens, you know, it's a Desi community problem, it's, it's, it's an international problem. You know, one time a guy tells his wife, he says, go make me an egg. So she goes, she boils the egg, comes back, brings the egg. He says, Bewakuf, stupid woman, you were supposed to? Make an omelet. You made me a boiled egg. She said, oh, what am I going to do? Next day, he says, make me an egg. She's smart. She said, you know what? He wants an omelet. She makes an omelet, brings it. She says, stupid woman. You're supposed to boil the egg. And the third day, he says, make me an egg. She says, today I'm going to beat him at his game. I'm going to boil one egg and fry one egg. I'm going to bring both. So she goes, she boils one egg, she makes an omelet to the second, she brings it in front of him. He says, stupid woman, the egg that you were supposed to boil, you fried, the one you were supposed to fry, you boiled. <laughs> right? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam showed us how to live a social life, a, a, a family life. 
You know, Umar the Nabi Sallallahu stayed away from his wife for one month. Oh, but the story is long. He goes up, Umar the Iwana comes and says, Ya Rasulullah, before women in our, in, 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 uh, in, in, in Jahiliyyah, we never gave them a chance to speak. Tomorrow, tomorrow is my, my, my speech on uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi dealing with the support and those lowered to them. And they're very lightly, I'll, I'll, I will expound on this topic. But he says that, Ya Rasulullah, before women never had a voice. When you came, then you allowed them this voice today that you hear. My time is up. It's great to hear all these qualities of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi And it's great to know how Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the greatest prophet. And it's great to know that we're part of the, we're, we're the ummah of the greatest prophet. But that means nothing. That means nothing if we don't try to act upon how Nabi Sallallahu if we don't try to instill those qualities in ourselves. I remember many years ago, uh, I was at the house of one of my teachers, Morano Sumai Miwati. And uh, you know, we would go uh, after Isha for some khidmat. And he was great. I was in Mishka at that time. And he was great in Shamad al Tirmidhi papers, uh, the characters of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he, was t he told us this. He said that I was reading a certain kid's paper and I started crying. We said, you know, why'd you, why'd you cry? He said, I asked the question, give me some of the qualities of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one student just described every one of them. And at the end he said, Oh my Allah, I ask you that you give us even one of these qualities. Maybe through this one quality, we can enter Jannah. And I leave you with the same dua. That we've heard the many qualities of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We've heard different aspects. But take it back with us. Let this not be, this should be food for thought, not candy for the ears. Come, you listen, nice, mashallah, conference is good, you eat the dinner, oh, chilling, great program. Five days later, what was the program about? Hey, we don't know, man. All we know is that it was, mashallah, a lot of scholars came, there's a lot of beards in the room, a lot of dopies in the room, it looked like a holy gathering. No, no, no. The point is, we take this back into our lives. Unless not to give us the benefit, uh, the tawfiq to act upon what has been said. First and foremost, myself, uh, may, may he make us uh, more uh, closer to the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, in resemblance and its character.